Good morning, good morning everybody. This is a beautiful, what is it, Tuesday morning? Is it Tuesday or Monday? Oh, it's Monday. <laughs> I'm sorry. Monday, August 3rd. And today is our third day on our Bible reading, reading challenge. And uh, I want to thank all of you for joining. Some I know some of you are on the live call. Hi, Zenia. Good morning. I saw you. And um, thank you again for being awake at this time. It's 5 a.m. On, on, on the West Coast. So we are actually doing pretty good on our, on our Bible reading challenge. We went through the entire book of Genesis and almost through the entire... Well, we went through 29 chapters of Exodus. And today we're going to finish Exodus. And we're going to read the entire book of Leviticus today. So it should be pretty fun. And uh, we're doing great. This is our third day. Imagine by the end of this month, we would be able to say we read the whole Bible from cover to cover in one month. So that's a blessing. And apologies for yesterday's transmission. It was, um, it was a little bit uh, weird because I, I didn't know I was... Um, I was muted at the beginning, but fortunately we, we caught it early. And, um, and so anyhow, apologize for that, but we should be good today. And I will read a little bit slower today. I know that yesterday we were kind of rushed. I, I, it was Sunday and uh, we had an early church service, but anyhow, but we should get through this pretty, pretty quick today. Um, it doesn't seem as long as I thought it would be for some reason. But anyhow, I hope you have your tea, your coffee, uh, your Bible open. We're going to pray and we're going to open up to Exodus chapter number 30. Let me put it on the screen. Exodus chapter number 30. We'll start there and, um, and I'll highlight the, the sections that I'm reading. So if you do want to follow along on screen, uh, feel more than welcome to do that. Or you can follow along in your own, in your own Bible. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you again for this beautiful day. Thank you for this morning that we were able to open our eyes and wake up and take another breath of life, Lord. And I thank you again for all that you're doing in our lives, Lord. We know that you're in control, that you're all-powerful, all-knowing, almighty. And God, there's nothing that could defeat you. And we pray, God, that you give us strength during these days. And I pray, God, you help us as we endeavor to read your word today. Give us wisdom, give us ears to hear, and as the Bible says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. I pray that we would increase our faith today, in Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, so uh, we are here in Exodus 30, you see it on the screen, and I want to go ahead and start reading Exodus chapter 30. And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon. Of shittim wood shalt thou make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof, and the sides thereof, round about, and the horns thereof. And thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about. And two golden rings shalt thou make to it under the crown of it, by the two corners thereof, upon the two sides of it shalt thou make it. And they shall be for places for the staves to bear it withal. And thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with thee. And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning when he dresseth the lamps. He shall burn incense upon it. And Aaron lighteth the lamps at even. He shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. Ye, ye shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering. Neither shall ye pour drink offering thereon. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonements. Once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 
When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord. When thou numberest them, that there be no plague among them, when thou numberest them. This they shall give every one that passeth among them that are numbered half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. A shekel is twenty geras, and half shekel shall be the offering of the Lord. Every one that passeth among them that are numbered from twenty years old and above shall give an offering unto the Lord. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel when they give an offering unto the Lord to make an atonement for your souls. And thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel and shalt appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation that it may be a memorial unto the children of Israel before the Lord to make an atonement for your souls. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thou shalt also make a laver of brass and his foot also of brass to wash withal. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle and the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord. So they shall wash their hands and their feet that they die not. And it shall be a statute forever to them even to him and to his seed throughout their generations. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh, five hundred shekels, and of sweet cinnamon half so much, even two hundred and fifty shekels, and of sweet calamus two hundred and fifty shekels, and of cassia five hundred shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil olive on hen. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of apothecary. It shall be an holy anointing oil. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table, and all his vessels, and the candlestick, and his vessels, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels, and the laver, and his foot. And thou shalt sanctify them, that they may be most holy, Whatsoever touches them shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them, and they may minister, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured, neither shall ye make any other like it after the composition of it. It is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. Whosoever compoundeth any like it, or whosoever putteth any of it upon a stranger, shall even be cut off from his people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spices, Stacti, and Anika, and Galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each shall there be a like weight. And thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, tempered together, pure and holy. And thou shalt beat some of it, very small and put of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation where I will meet with thee. It shall be unto you most holy. And as for the perfume which thou shalt make, ye shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof. It shall be unto thee holy for the Lord. Whosoever shall make like unto that to smell thereto shall even be cut off from his people. Exodus chapter number 31 and uh, just making sure we're still good. Okay, yes, we are good. All right. Perfect. <clears throat> just checking the screen here. Okay. Thank you. And by, by the way, those of you who put comments, I, I normally read the comments after we finish because I, I want to get right through these chapters. So thank you again for all your comments and uh, appreciate that. Okay, so Exodus 30. Um, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter number 31. There we go. Okay. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God and wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones to set them and in carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. And I, behold, I have given with him Aholiab, the son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan, and in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted I have put wisdom, that they may 
make all that I have commanded thee, the tabernacle of the congregation and the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat that is thereupon and all the furniture of the tabernacle and the, ta of the table and his furniture and the pure candlestick with all his furniture and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offering with all his furniture and the labor and his foot and the cloth of service and the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office and the anointing oil and sweet incense for the holy place according to all that I have commanded thee <clears throat> shall they do. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. Exodus chapter number 32. <clears throat> and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf, and they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out, to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of, I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides, on the one side, and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God graven upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh into the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands and brake them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? 
And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. <clears throat> and I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord, peradventure I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, O oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore go now, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, mine angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people, because they made the calf which Aaron made. Exodus chapter 33. Amen. Let's see, 33. All right, and um, is this her? All right, we're doing good. Exodus 33, here we go. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Moses, Depart, and go up then, hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. For I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. And when the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned, and no man did put on him his ornaments. For the Lord had said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff-necked people, I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment, and consume thee. Therefore now put off thine ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that every one which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people." And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto them, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, 
for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth, that I will put thee in the cliff of, of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Exodus chapter 34. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and Moses rose up early in the morning, and went up unto Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvels, such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Observe that which... Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down <clears throat> their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice, and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons a whoring after their gods. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep seven days. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread as I commanded thee. In the time of the month Abib, for in the month Abib thou camest out from Egypt. All that openeth the matrix is mine, and every firstling among the cattle, thy cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is male. But the firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou redeem him not, then shalt thou break his neck. All the firstborn of thy sons thou shalt redeem, and none shall appear before me empty. Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. In earring time and in harvest thou shalt rest. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Thrice in the year shall all your men, children, appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. For I will cast out of the nations before thee and enlarge thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land when thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God thrice in the year. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven, neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left unto the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights and did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in, he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. 
But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. Exodus 35. Sorry, just wanted to sip my tea there. All right, Exodus chapter 35. And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded, that ye should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitation upon the Sabbath day. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord God commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it. An offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skin dyed red and badger skin and shittim wood and oil for the light and spices for anointing oil and for the sweet incense and onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. And every wise hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord hath commanded, the tabernacle, his tent and his coverings, his tatches and his boards, his bars, his pillars, and his sockets, the ark and the staves thereof, with the mercy seat and the veil of the covering, the table and his staves, and all his vessels and showbread, the candlesticks also for the light and his furniture and his lamps with the oil for the light, and the incense altar and his staves, and the anointing oil and the sweet incense and the hanging for the door at the entering of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering with his brazen great, his staves and all his vessels, the labor and his foot, the hangings of the court, his pillars and his sockets and the hanging for the door of the court, the pins of the tabernacle and the pins of the court and their cords, the cloths of service to do service for the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron, the priest and the garments of his son, sons to minister in the priest's office. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses and they came, every one whose heart stirred him up and every one whom his spirit made willing and they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all his service, and for the holy garments. And they came, both men and women, as many as were willing-hearted, and brought bracelets, and earrings, and rings, and tablets, and all jewels of gold. And every man that offered, offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. And every man with whom was found blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine linen, and goat's hair, red skins of rams, and badger skins, brought them. Every one that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought the Lord's offering, and every man with whom was found shit and wood for any work of the service brought it. And all the women that were wise-hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. And all the women whose hearts stirred them up in wisdom spun goats here. And the rulers brought onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate and spice and oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work, for the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord hath called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he hath filled him with the Spirit of God, and wisdom, and understanding, and knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, and to devise curious work to work in gold, and in silver, and in brass and in the cutting of stones to set them and in carving of wood to make any manner of cunning work and he hath put in his heart that he had that he may teach both he and Aholiab the son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan them hath he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workmen and of the embroider in blue and in purple and scarlet and in fine linen and of the weaver even of them that do any work and of those that devise cunning work Exodus chapter 36. Then wrought Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise hearted in whom the Lord had put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord had commanded. And Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise hearted man in whose heart the Lord put, had put wisdom, even every one whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. And they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service and the sanctuary to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. 
and all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing. For the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and too much. And every wise-hearted man among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twined linen, and blue and purple and scarlet with cherubims of cunning work made he them. The length of one curtain was twenty and eight cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits, and the curtains were all of one size. And he coupled the five curtains one with an, unto another, and, uh, and the other five curtains he coupled one unto another. And he made loops of blue on the edge of one curtain from the selvage in the coupling. Like, likewise he made in the ut uttermost side of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops made he in one curtain, and fifty loops made he in the edge of the curtain which was in the coupling of the second. The loops held one curtain to another. And he made fifty tatches of gold and coupled the curtains one unto another with the tatches. So it became one tabernacle. And he made curtains of goat's hair for the tent over the tabernacle. Eleven curtains he made them. The length of one curtain was thirty cubits, and four cubits was the breadth of one curtain. The eleven curtains were of one size. And he coupled five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. And he made fifty loops upon the uttermost edge of the curtain in the coupling. And fifty loops made he upon the edge of the curtain which coupled the second. And he made fifty tatches of brass to couple the tent together, that it might be one. And he made a covering for the tent of the ram skin dyed red, and a covering of badger skin above that. And he made boards for the tabernacle of shittim wood standing up. The length of a board was ten cubits, and the breadth of a board was one cubit and a half. One board had two tenons, equally distanced one from another. Thus did he make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And he made boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side, southward, and forty sockets of silver he made under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for his two tenons, and two sockets under another board for his two tenons. And for the other side of the tabernacle, which is toward the north corner, he made twenty boards. And there forty sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. And for the sides of the tabernacle westward he made six boards. And two boards made he for the corners of the tabernacle and the two sides. And they were coupled beneath and coupled together at the head thereof to one ring. Thus did he thus he did to both of them in both the corners and there were eight boards and their sockets were sixteen sockets of silver under every board two sockets and he made bars of shittim wood five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle for the sides westward and he made the middle bar to shoot through the boards from the one end to the other and he overlaid the boards with gold and made their rings of gold to be places for the bars and overlaid the bars with gold and he made a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen with cherubims, made he it of cunning work. And he made thereunto four pillars of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold, and he cast them four sockets of silver. And he made an hanging for the tabernacle door of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen of needlework, and the five pillars of it with their hooks. And he overlaid their chapters and their fillets with gold, but their five sockets were of brass. Exodus 37. We're almost done with Exodus. And Bezalel made the ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half was the length of it, and a cubit and a half the breadth of it, and a cubit and a half the height of it. And he overlaid it with pure gold within and without, and made a crown of gold to it round about. And he cast for it four rings of gold to be set by the four corners of it, even two rings upon the one side of it, and two rings upon the other side of it. And he made staves of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold. And he put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, to bear the ark. And he made the mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half was the length thereof, and one cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And he made two cherubims of gold beaten, out of one piece made he them on the two ends of the mercy seat. One cherub on the end of this side, and another cherub on the other end of that side. Out of the mercy seat made he the cherubims, on the two ends thereof, and the cherubim spread out their wings on high, and covered their wings over the mercy seat, with their faces one to another, even to the mercy seat where were the faces of the cherubims. And he made the table of shittim wood, two cubits was the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof, and he overlaid it with pure gold, and made thereunto a crown of 
gold round about, and he made thereunto a border of a handbreadth round about, and made a crown of gold for the border thereof round about. And he cast for it four rings of gold, and put the rings upon the four corners that were in the four feet thereof. Over against the border were the rings, the places of the staves, to bear the table. And he made the staves of shittim gold, and overlaid them with gold to bear the table. And he made the vessels which were upon the tables, his dishes, and his spoons, and his bowls, and his covers to cover with all of pure gold. And he made the candlestick of pure gold of beaten work, made he the candlestick. His shaft, and his branch, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers were of the same. And six branches going out of the sides thereof, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side thereof, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side thereof, three bowls made after the fashion of almonds in one branch, a knop and a flower, and three bowls made like almonds in another branch, a knop and a flower. So throughout the six branches going out of the candlestick, and the candlestick were four bowls, and in the candlestick were four bowls made like almonds, his knops and his flowers, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches going out of it. Their knops and their branches were of the same. All of it was one beaten work of pure gold. And he made his seven lamps and his snuffers and his snuff dishes of pure gold, of a talent of pure gold made he it, and all the vessels thereof. And he made the incense altar of shittim wood. The length of it was a cubit and the breadth of it a cubit. It was four square and two cubits was the height of it. The horns thereof were of the same, and he overlaid it with pure gold, both the top of it and the sides thereof round about, and the horns of it also he made unto it a crown of gold round about, and he made two rings of gold for it under the crown thereof, by the two corners of it, upon the two sides thereof, to be places for the staves to bear it withal. And he made the staves of shittim wood, and he overlaid them with gold. And he made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of sweet spices according to the work of the apothecary. Exodus chapter 38. And he made the altar of burnt offering of shittim wood. Five cubits was the length thereof, and five cubits the breadth thereof. It was four square, and three cubits the height thereof. And he made the horns thereof on the four corners of it. The horns thereof were of the same, and he overlaid it with brass. And he made all the vessels of the altar, the pots, and the shovels, and the basins, and the flesh hooks, and the fire pans. All the vessels thereof made he of brass. And he made for the altar a brazen great work, great of network under the compass thereof, beneath unto the midst of it. And he cast four rings for the four ends of the grate of brass to be places for the staves. And he made the staves of shittim wood and overlaid them with brass. And he put the staves into the rings on the sides of the altar to bear it withal. He made the altar hollow with boards. And he made the labor of brass and the foot of it of brass, of the looking glasses of the women assembling, which assembled at the door of the congregation, of the tabernacle of the congregation, and he made the court on the south side southward. The hangings of the court were of fine twined linen on a hundred cubits. Their pillars were twenty, and the brazen sockets twenty. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. And for the north side, the hangings were a hundred cubits. Their pillars were twenty, and their sockets of brass twenty. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. And for the west side were hangings of fifty cubits. Their pillars ten, and their sockets ten the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. And for the east side, eastward, 50 cubits. The hangings of the one side of the gate were 15 cubits, the pillars three and their sockets three. And for the other side of the court gate on this hand and that hand were hangings of 15 cubits, their pillars three and their sockets three. All the hangings of the court round about of, were of fine twined linen and the sockets for the pillars were of brass, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver and the overlaying of their chapters of silver and all the pillars of the court were filled, filled, filleted with silver. <clears throat> and the hanging for the gate of the court was needlework of blue <clears throat> and of purple and scarlet and fine twine linen. And 20 cubits was the length. And the, and the height and the breadth was five cubits answerable to the hangings of the court. And their pillars were four and their sockets of brass four, their hooks of silver and the overlaying of their chapters and their fillets of silver. And all the pins of the tabernacle and of the court round about were of brass. This is the sum of the tabernacle, even of the tabernacle of testimony, as it was counted according to the commandment of Moses for the service of the Levites by the hand of Ithamar, son to Aaron the priest. And Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord commanded Moses. 
And with him was Aholiab, son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and a cunning workman, an embroiderer in blue and in purple and in scarlet and in fine linen. All the gold that was occupied for the work and all the work of the holy place, even the gold of the offering, was twenty and nine talents and seven hundred and thirty shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. And the silver of them that were numbered of the congregation was an hundred talents and a thousand seven hundred and three score and fifteen shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. A becca for every man that is half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary for every one that went to be numbered from twenty years old and upward for six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty men. And of the hundred talents of silver were cast the sockets of the sanctuary and the sockets of the veil on hundred sockets of the hundred talents, a talent for a socket. And of the thousand seven hundred seventy and five shekels made the hooks for the pillars and overlaid them, overlaid their chapters and filleted them. And the brass of the offering was seventy talents and two thousand and four hundred shekels. And therewith he made the sockets to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the brazen altar, and the brazen grate for it, and all the vessels of the altar. And the sockets of the court round about, and the sockets of the court gate, and all the pins of the tabernacle, and all the pins of the court round about. Exodus 39. And of the blue and purple and scarlet they made cloths of service to do service in the holy place, and made the holy garments for Aaron, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the ephod of gold, blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen. And they did beat the gold into thin plates and cut it into wires to work it in the blue and in the purple and in the scarlet and in the fine linen. With cunning work they made shoulder pieces for it to couple it together. By the two edges was it coupled together. And the curious girdle of his ephod that was upon it was of the same according to the work thereof of gold, blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen as the Lord commanded Moses. And they wrought onyx stones enclosed in ouches of gold graven and signets as signets are graven with the names of the children of Israel. And he put them on the shoulders of the ephod, that they should be stones for memorial to the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the breastplate of cunning work, like the work of the ephod, of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. It was four square, they made the breastplate double. A span was the length thereof, and a span the breadth thereof being doubled. And they set it in four rows of stones. The first row was a sardius, a topaz, a carbuncle, and this was the first row, and the second row an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond, and the third row a liguri, and an agate, and an amethyst, and the fourth row a brill, an onyx, and a jasper. They were enclosed in ouches of gold in their enclosings. And the stones were according to the names of the children of Israel, twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, every one with his name according to the twelve tribes. And they made upon the breastplate chains at the ends of wreathen work of pure gold. And they made two ouches of gold and two gold rings and put the two rings in the two ends of the breastplate and they put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings on the end of the breastplate. And the two ends of the two wreathen chains they fastened in the two ouches and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it and they made two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate upon the border of it which was on the side of the ephod inward. And they made two other golden rings and put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath toward the fore part of it over against the other coupling thereof above the curious girdle of the ephod. And they did bind the breastplate by his rings into the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue that it might be above the curious girdle of the ephod and that the breastplate might not be loose from the ephod as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the robe of the ephod of woven work all of blue. And there was a hole in the midst of the robe as the hole of a habergeon with a band round about the hole, that it should not rend. And they made upon the hems of the robe pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet and twined linen. And they made belts of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates upon the hem of the robe, round about between the pomegranates, and a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, round about the hem of the robe to minister in, as the Lord commanded Moses. And they made coats of fine linen of woven work for Aaron and for his sons and a mitre of fine linen, and goodly bonnets of fine linen, and linen breeches of fine twined linen, and a girdle of fine twined linen, and blue, and purple, and scarlet of needlework, as the Lord commanded Moses. And they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold, and wrote upon it a writing like to the whole engravings of the signets, holiness to the Lord. And they tried, and they tied unto it a lace of blue, to fasten it on high upon the mitre, as the Lord commanded Moses. 
Thus was all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation finished, and the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did they. And they brought the tabernacle unto Moses, the tent, and all his furniture, of his tatches, his boards, his bars, and his pillars, and his sockets, and the covering of ram skins dyed red, and the covering of badger skins, and the veil of the covering, the ark of the testimony, and the staves thereof, and the mercy seat, the table, and all the vessels thereof, and the showbread, the pure candlestick with the lamps thereof, even with the lamps to be set in order, and all the vessels thereof, and the oil for light, and the golden altar, and the anointing oil, and the sweet incense, and the hanging for the tabernacle door, and the brazen altar, and his great of brass, his staves, and all his vessels, the laver, and his foot, the hangings of the court, his pillars, and his sockets, and the hanging for the court gate, his cords, and his pins, and all the vessels of the service of the tabernacle for the tent of the congregation, the cloths of the service to do service in the holy place, and the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and his son's garments to minister in the priest's office, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel made all the work, and Moses looked upon all the work, and behold, they had done it as the Lord had commanded. Even so had they done it, and Moses blessed them. All right, here we have our last chapter of Exodus. And the, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month shalt thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. And thou shalt put there in the ark of the testimony, and cover the ark with the veil, and thou shalt bring in the table, and set in order the things that are to be set in order upon it. And thou shalt bring in the candlestick, and light the lamps thereof, and thou shalt set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony, and put the hanging of the door to the tabernacle. And thou shalt set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. And thou shalt set the labor between the tent of the congregation and the altar, and put water therein. And thou shalt set up the court round about, and hang up the hanging at the court gate. And thou shalt take the anointing oil, and anoint the tabernacle, and all that is therein, and shall hallow it, and all the vessels thereof, and it shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint the altar of the burnt offering, and all his vessels, and sanctify the altar, and it shall be an altar most holy. And thou shalt anoint the laver in his foot and sanctify it. And thou shalt bring Aaron and his sons unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and wash them with water. And thou shalt put upon Aaron the holy garments and anoint him and sanctify him that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt bring his sons and clothe them with coats. And thou shalt anoint them as thou didst anoint their father that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. For the, their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Thus did Moses, according to all that the Lord commanded him, so did he. And it came to pass in the first month and the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. And Moses reared up the tabernacle and fastened his sockets and set up the boards thereof and put in the bars thereof and reared up his pillars. And he spread abroad the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent above upon it, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he took and put up the testimony into the ark and set the staves on the ark and he put the mercy seat above upon the ark and he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil uh, of the covering and covered the ark of the testimony as the lord commanded moses and he put the table in the tent of the congregation upon the side of the tabernacle northward without the veil and he set the bread in the co in order upon it before the lord as the lord had commanded moses and he put the candlestick in the tent of the congregation over against the table on the side of the tabernacle southward and he lighted the lamps before the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he put the golden altar in the tent of the congregation before the veil. And he burnt sweet incense thereon, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set up the hanging at the door of the tabernacle. And he put the altar of burnt offering by the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. And offered upon it the burnt offering and the meat offering, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set the laver between the tent of the congregation and the altar. And put water there to wash with all. And Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands. And their feet thereat, when they went into the tent of the congregation, and when they came near unto the altar, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar, and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work, and then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. 
And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they, they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. Amen. So we finished Exodus. <clears throat> Here we are in Leviticus. And we'll start here in chapter 1. <clears throat> and the Lord called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the Lord, children, speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord, and the priest Aaron's son shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about the, upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into his pieces. And the sons of Aaron, the priest, shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. And the priest, Aaron's son, shall lay the parts, the head, and the fat in order upon the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. But his inwards and his legs shall he wash in water. And the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And if his offering be of the flocks, namely of the sheep or of the goats, for a burnt offering, he shall bring it a male without blemish. And he shall kill it on the side of the altar northward before the Lord. And the priest Aaron's son shall sprinkle his blood round about upon the altar. And he shall cut it into his pieces with his head and his fat. And the priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. But he shall wash the inwards and the legs with water. And the priest shall bring it all and burn it upon the altar. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And if the burnt sacrifice for his offering to the Lord be of fowls, then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or of young pigeons. And the priest shall bring it unto the altar and wring off his head and, uh, and burn it on the altar. And the blood thereof shall be wrung out at the side of the altar. And he shall pluck away his crop with his feathers and cast it beside the altar on the east part by the place of the ashes. And he shall cleave it with, it with the wings thereof, but shall not divide it as un asunder. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar, upon the wood that is upon the fire. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Leviticus chapter number 2. Just checking our time here. Okay, we're doing good. Leviticus chapter number two. <clears throat> and when any will offer and any will offer a meat offering unto the Lord, his offering shall be a fine flour, and he shall pour oil upon it, and put frankincense thereon. And he shall bring it unto Aaron's sons, the priests, and he shall take thereout his handful of the flour thereof, and of the oil thereof, with all the frankincense thereof, and the priest shall burn the memorial of it upon the altar, to be an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the offering of the Lord made by fire. And if thou bring an oblation of a meat offering, bacon in the oven, it shall be unleavened cakes of fine flour mingled with oil, or unleavened wafers anointed with oil. And if Thy oblation be a meat offering, bacon in a pan. It shall be a fine flour, unleavened, mingled with oil. Thou shalt part it in pieces and pour oil thereon. It is a meat offering. And if the oblation be a meat offering, bacon in the frying pan, it shall be made a fine flour with oil. And thou shalt bring the meat offering that is made of these things unto the Lord. And when it is presented unto the priest, he shall bring it unto the altar and the priest shall take from the meat offering a memorial that are up, and shall burn it upon the altar. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And that which is left of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is the thing most holy of the offering of the Lord made by fire. No meat offering which ye shall bring unto the Lord shall be made with leaven. For ye shall burn no leaven nor any honey 
and any offering of the Lord made by fire. As for the oblation of the first fruits, ye shall offer them unto the Lord, but they shall not be burnt on the altar for a sweet savor. And every oblation of thy meat offering shalt thou season with salt. Neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. With all thine offering thou shalt offer salt. And if thou offer meat offering of thy first fruits unto the Lord, thou shalt offer for the meat offering of thy first fruits green ears of corn dried by the fire, even corn beaten out of full ears. And thou shalt put oil upon it and lay frankincense thereon. It is a meat offering. And the priest shall bring the memorial of it, part of the beaten corn thereof, and part of the oil thereof. With all the frankincense thereof, it is an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Leviticus chapter number 3. And if, the oblation, and if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering, if he offer it of the herd, whether it be a male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering and kill it at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron's sons, the priest, shall sprinkle the blood upon the, the altar round about. And he shall offer of the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord, the fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. And Aaron's son shall burn it on the altar upon the burnt sacrifice, which is upon the wood that is on the fire. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And if his offering for a sacrifice of peace offering unto the Lord be on the flock, male or female, he shall offer it without blemish. If he offer a lamb for his offering, then shall he offer it before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron's son shall sprinkle the blood thereof round about upon the altar. And he shall offer the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord, the fat thereof, and the whole rump. It shall he take off hard by the backbone. And the fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire unto the Lord. And if his offering be a goat, then he shall offer it before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of it, and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar round about him. He shall offer thereof his offering, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The, uh, the fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver, with the kidneys, it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savor. All the fat is the Lord's. It shall be a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your dwellings, that ye eat neither fat nor blood. Leviticus chapter number 4 And the Lord spake unto Moses, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do so against any of them, if the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin which he hath sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head, and kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood, and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood, and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall take off from it all the fat of the bullock for the sin offering, the fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is in upon them, which is by the flanks and the collar of the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. As it was taken from off it was as it was taken off from the bullock of the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the priest shall burn them upon the altar of the burnt offering. And the skin of the bullock, and all the flesh with his head, and with his legs, and his inwards, and his dung, even the whole bullock shall he carry forth without the camp unto a clean place where the ashes are poured out, 
and burn him on the wood with fire where the ashes are poured out, shall he be burnt. And if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance, and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly, and they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which should not be done, and are guilty, when the sin which they have sinned against it is known, then the congregation shall offer a young bullock for the sin, and bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock before the Lord, and the bullock shall be killed before the Lord, and the priest that is anointed shall bring of the bullock's blood to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood and sprinkle it, upon, sprinkle it seven times before the Lord, even before the veil. And he shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar, which is before the Lord that is in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour out all the blood at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall, he shall take all the fat from him and burn it upon the altar, and he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering, so shall he do with this. And the priest shall make an atonement for them, and it shall be forgiven them. And he shall carry forth the bullock without the camp, and burn him as he burned the first bullock. It is a sin offering for the congregation. When a ruler hath sinned and done somewhat through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord his God concerning things which should not be done, and is guilty, or if his sin, wherein he hath sinned, come to his knowledge, he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a male without blemish, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the goat and kill it in the place where they kill the burnt offering before the Lord. It is a sin offering. And the priest shall take the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering and shall pour out his blood at the bottom of the altar of burnt offering. And he shall burn all his fat upon the altar as the fat of the sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall make an atonement for him as concerning his sin and it shall be forgiven him. And if any one of the common people sin through ignorance, while he doeth somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done, and be guilty, or if a sin which he had sinned come to his knowledge, then he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a female without blemish for his sin which he had sinned. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering, and slay the sin offering in the place of the burnt offering. And the priest shall take of the blood thereof with his finger, and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar, and he shall take away all the fat thereof, as the fat is taken away from off the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the priest shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor unto the Lord, and the priest shall make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. And if he bring a lamb for a sin offering, he shall bring it a female without blemish, and shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering, and slay it for a sin offering in the place where they kill the burnt offering. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. And he shall take away all the fat thereof as the fat of the lamb is taken away from the sacrifice of the peace offering. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar according to the offerings made by fire unto the Lord. And the priest shall make an atonement for his sin that he hath committed and it shall be forgiven him. Leviticus chapter number 5. And if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing and is a witness, whether he hath seen it, seen or known of it, if he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Or if a soul touch any unclean thing, any unclean thing whether it be carcass or an unclean beast or a carcass of an unclean cattle or the carcass of an unclean creeping things, and if it be hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. Or if he touch the uncleanness of men, Whatsoever uncleanness it be, that a man shall be defiled withal, and it be hid from him, when he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty. Or, if a soul swear, pronouncing with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatsoever it be, that a man shall pronounce with an oath, and it be hid from him, when he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty in one of these. And it shall be, when he shall be guilty in one of these, that he shall confess that he hath sinned in that thing. And the Lord shall bring his trespass offering, and he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord for his sin which he hath sinned, a female from the flock, a lamb, or a kid of the goats for a sin offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin. And if he be not able to bring a lamb, then he shall bring for his trespass then he shall bring for his trespass which he had committed two turtle doves or two young pigeons unto the Lord, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. 
and he shall bring them unto the priest who shall offer that which is for the sin offering first and wring off his head from his neck, but shall not divide it asunder. And he shall sprinkle of the blood of the sin offering upon the side of the altar, and the rest of the blood shall be wrung out at the bottom of the altar. It is a sin offering. And he shall offer the second for a burnt offering according to the manner, and the priest shall make an atonement for him, for his sin which he hath sinned, and it shall be forgiven him. But if he be not able to bring two turtle doves or two pigeons, then he that sinned shall bring for his offering the tenth part of an ephah, of fine flour for a sin offering. He shall put no oil upon it, neither shall he put any frankincense thereon, for it is a sin offering. Then shall he bring it to the priest, and the priest shall take his handful of it, even a memorial thereof, and burn it on the altar, according to the offerings made by fire unto the Lord. It is a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him, as touching his sin, that he hath sinned in one of these, and it shall be forgiven him, and the remnant shall be the priest as the meat offering. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul commit a trespass, a sin through ignorance, in the holy things of the Lord, and he shall bring for his trespass unto the Lord a ram without blemish, out of the flocks, with thy estimation by shekels of silver, after the shekel of the sanctuary for a trespass offering. And he shall make amends for the harm that he hath done in the holy thing, and shall add the fifth part thereto, and give it unto the priest, and the priest shall make an atonement for him, with the ram of the trespass offering, and it shall be forgiven him. And if a soul sin and commit any of those things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Lord, though he wist it not, yet he is guilty and shall bear his iniquity. And he shall bring a ram without blemish out of thy flock with <clears throat> thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest, and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his, ig his ignorance wherein he erred and wist it not and it shall be forgiven him. It is a trespass offering. He has certainly trespassed against the Lord. Leviticus chapter number 6. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin and commit a trespass against the Lord, and lie unto his neighbor in that which, in that which was delivered him to keep, or in fellowship, or in a thing taken away by violence, or hath deceived his neighbor, or hath found that which was lost in life concerning it, and sweareth falsely, in any of these that a man doeth sinning therein, then it shall be, because he hath sinned and is guilty, that he shall restore that which he took violently away, or the thing which he hath deceitfully gotten, or that which was delivered him to keep, or the lost thing which he found, or all that about which he hath sworn falsely, he shall even restore it in the principle, and shall add the fifth part more thereto, and give it unto him to whom it appertaineth, in the day of his trespass offering. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, a ram without blemish out of the flock, with thy estimation, for a trespass offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord, and it shall be forgiven for him for any anything of all that he hath done in trespassing therein. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his son, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night, unto the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be burning it. And the priest shall put on his linen garment, and his linen breeches shall he put upon his flesh, and take up the ashes which the fire hath consumed with the burnt offering on the altar, and he shall put them beside the altar, and he shall put off his garments, and put on other garments, and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning it. It shall not be put out, and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning, and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. And this is the law of the meat offering. The sons of Aaron shall offer it before the Lord, before the altar. And he shall take of it his handful of the flour of the meat offering, and of the oil thereof, and of the frankincense which is upon the meat offering, and shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor, even the memorial of it unto the Lord. And the remainder thereof shall Aaron and his sons eat with unleavened bread, shall it be eaten in the holy place in the court of the tabernacle of the congregation, shall they shall eat it. It shall not be baking with leaven. I have given it unto them for their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most holy, as is the sin offering, and as the trespass offering. All the males among the children of Aaron shall eat of it. It shall be a statute forever in your generations concerning the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Every one that toucheth 
them shall be holy. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is the offering of Aaron and of his sons, which they shall offer unto the Lord in the day when he is anointed. The tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a meat offering perpetual, half of it in the morning and half thereof at night. And a pan it shall be made with oil, and when it is bacon, thou shalt bring it in. And the bacon pieces of the meat offering shalt thou offer for a sweet savor unto the Lord and the priests and the, and the priest of his sons that is anointed in his stead shall offer it. It is a statue forever unto the Lord. It shall be wholly burnt. Every meat offering for the priest shall be wholly burnt. It shall not be eaten. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord. It is most holy. The priest that offereth it for sin shall eat it. In the holy place shall it be eaten in the court of the tabernacle of the congregation. Whatsoever shall touch the flesh thereof shall be holy. And when there is sprinkled of the blood thereof upon any garment, thou shalt wash that one place. But the earth vessel wherein it is sodden shall be broken. And if it be sodden in a brazen pot, it shall be both scoured and rinsed in water. All the males among the priests shall eat thereof. It is most holy. And no sin offering whereof any of the blood is brought into the tabernacle of the congregation to reconcile with all in the holy place shall be eaten. It shall be burnt with fire. Leviticus chapter number 7. Excuse me, I was just having my sip of tea. Okay, uh, Leviticus chapter number 7. All right, likewise, <clears throat> this is the law of the trespass offering. It is most holy. In the place where they kill the burnt offering, shall they kill the trespass offering, and the blood thereof shall be, shall he sprinkle round about upon the altar. And he shall offer it of all the fat thereof, the rump and the fat that covereth the inwards and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks and the call that is above the liver. With the kidneys it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar for an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a trespass offering. Every male among the priests shall eat thereof. It shall be eaten in the holy place. It is most holy. As a sin offering is, so is the trespass offering. There is one law for them. The priest that maketh atonement therewith shall have it. And the priest that offereth any man's burnt offering, even the priest shall have to himself the skin of the burnt offering which he hath offered. And all the meat offering that is baking in the oven, and all that is dressed in the frying pan, and in the pan shall be the priest that offereth it. And every meat offering mingled with oil and dry shall all the sons of Aaron have one as much as another. And this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings which he shall offer unto the Lord. If he offer it for thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mingled with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil, and cakes mingled with oil, of fine flour fried beside the cakes. He shall offer for his offering leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offerings. And of it he shall offer one out of the whole oblation for an heave offering unto the Lord. And it shall be the priest that sprinkleth the blood of the peace offerings. And the, flesh of the tar uh, and the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. But if the sacrifice of his offering be a vow or a voluntary offering, <clears throat> it shall be even eaten the same day that he offered the sacrifice. And on the morrow also the remainder of it shall be eaten. But the remainder of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burnt with fire. And if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings be eaten at all on the third day, it shall not be accepted, neither shall it be imputed unto him that offereth it. It shall be an abomination, and the soul that eateth of it shall bear his iniquity. And the flesh that toucheth any unclean thing shall not be eaten. It shall be burnt with fire, and as for the flesh, all that be clean shall eat thereof. But the soul that eateth of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertain unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. Moreover, the soul that touch any unclean thing as the uncleanness of man, or any unclean beast, or any abominable unclean thing, and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings which pertain unto the Lord, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Ye shall eat no manner of fat, or ox, or of sheep, of fat, of ox, or of sheep, 
or of goat, and the fat of the beast that dieth of itself, and the fat of that which is torn with beast, may be used in any other use, but ye shall in no wise eat it. For whosoever eateth the fat of the beast, of which men offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, even the soul that eateth it shall be cut off from his people. Moreover, ye shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be a fowl or a beast, in any of your dwellings. Whatsoever soul it be that eateth any manner of blood, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, He that offereth the sacrifice of his peace offerings unto the Lord shall bring his oblation unto the Lord of the sacrifice of his peace offerings. His own hand shall bring the offerings of the Lord made by fire, the fat with the breast. It shall he bring that the breast may be waved for a wave offering before the Lord, and the priest shall burn the fat upon the altar. But the breast shall be Aaron's and his sons, and the right shoulder shall he give unto the priest for an heave offering of the sacrifice of your peace offerings. He among the sons of Aaron that offered the blood of the peace offerings and the fat shall have the right shoulder for his part. For the wave breast and the heave shoulder have I taken uh, of the children of Israel from off the sacrifices of their peace offerings and have given them unto Aaron the priest and unto his sons by a statute forever from among the children of Israel. This is the portion of the anointing of Aaron and of the anointing of his sons out of the offering of the Lord uh, made by fire in the day when he presented them to minister unto the Lord in the priest's office, which the Lord commanded to be given them of the children of Israel the day that he anointed them by a statute forever throughout their generations. This is the law of the burnt offering, of the meat offering, and of the sin offering, and of the trespass offering, and of the consecrations, and of the sacrifice of the peace offerings, which the Lord commanded Moses in Mount Sinai in the day that he commanded the children of Israel to offer their oblations unto the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. Leviticus chapter number 8. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Take Aaron and his sons with him, and the garments, and the anointing oil, and a bullock for the sin offering, and two rams, and a basket of unleavened bread, and gather thou all the congregation together unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and the assembly was gathered together unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Moses said unto the congregation, This is the thing which the Lord commanded to be done. And Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed him with water and put upon him the coat and girded him with the girdle and clothed him with the robe and put the ephod upon him. And he girded him with the curious girdle of the ephod and bound it unto him therewith. And he put the breastplate upon him and he put in the breastplate the Urim and the Thummim and he put the mitre upon his head, also the mitre, even upon his forefront did he put the golden plate, the holy crown, as the Lord commanded Moses. And Moses took the anointing oil and was anointed in the tabernacle and all that was therein and sanctified them. And he sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times and anointed the altar and all his vessels, both the laver and his foot, to sanctify them. And he poured of the anointing oil upon Aaron's head and anointed him to sanctify him. And Moses brought Aaron's sons and put coats upon them and girded them with girdles and put bonnets on them upon them as the Lord commanded Moses. And he brought the bullock for the sin offering and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the bullock for the sin offering and he slew it. And Moses took the blood and put it upon the horns of the altar round about with his finger and purified the altar and poured the blood at the bottom of the altar and sanctified it to make reconciliation upon it. And he took all the fat that was upon the inwards and the call above the liver and the two kidneys and their fat and Moses burned it upon the altar. But the bullock and his hide, his flesh and his dung, he burnt with fire without the camp, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he brought the ram for a burnt offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram, and he killed it, and Moses sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about, and he cut the ram in pieces, and Moses burnt the head and the pieces and the fat. And he washed their inwards and the legs in water, and Moses burnt the whole ram upon the altar. It was a burnt sacrifice for a sweet savor and an offering made by fire unto the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he brought the other ram, the ram of consecration, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram, and he slew it, and Moses took of the blood of it, and put it upon the tip of Aaron's right ear, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. And he brought Aaron's sons, and Moses put of the blood upon the tip of their right ear, and upon the thumbs of their right hands, and upon the great toes of their right feet. And Moses sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about it and took the fat and the rump and all the fat that was upon the inwards and the call above the liver and the two kidneys and their fat and their right shoulder and out of the basket of unleavened bread that was before the Lord. He took one unleavened cake and a cake of oiled bread and one wafer and put them on the fat and upon the right shoulder and put all 
upon Aaron's hands and upon his son's hands and waved them for a wave offering before the Lord. And Moses took them off from off their hands and burnt them on the altar upon the burnt offerings. They were consecrations for a sweet savor. It is an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And Moses took the breast and waved it for a wave offering before the Lord for of, for of the ram of consecration. It was Moses' part, as the Lord commanded Moses. And Moses took of the anointing oil and of the blood which was upon the altar and sprinkled it upon Aaron and upon his garments and upon his sons and upon his sons' garments with him and sanctified Aaron and his garments and his sons and his sons' garments with him. And Moses said unto Aaron and to his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and there eat it with the bread that is in the basket of the consecrations as I commanded, saying, Aaron and his sons shall eat it. And that which remaineth of the flesh and of the bread shall ye burn with fire. And ye shall not go out of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation uh, in seven days until the days of your consecration be at an end. For seven days shall he consecrate you. As he hath done this day, so the Lord hath commanded to do, to make an atonement for you. Therefore shall ye abide at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation in the congregation day. And, and day... Therefore shall ye abide at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation day and night seven days and keep the charge of the Lord that ye die not, for so I am commanded. So Aaron and his sons did all things which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. Leviticus chapter number 9. And it came to pass on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said unto Aaron, Take thee a young calf for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering without blemish and offer them before the Lord. And unto the children of Israel thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering and a calf and a lamb, both of the first year without blemish for a burnt offering. Also a bullock and a ram for peace offerings to sacrifice before the Lord and a meat offering mingled with oil for today the Lord will appear unto you. And they brought that which Moses commanded before the tabernacle of the congregation. And all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. And the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. And Moses said unto Aaron, Go unto the altar and offer thy sin offering and thy burnt offering. And make an atonement for thyself and for the people. And offer the offering of the people and make an atonement for them as the Lord commanded. Aaron therefore went unto the altar and slew the calf of the sin offering which was for himself. And the sons of Aaron brought the blood unto him. And he dipped his finger in the blood and put it upon the horns of the altar and poured out the blood at the bottom of the altar. But the fat and the kidneys and the crawl above the liver of the sin offering he burnt upon the altar as the Lord commanded Moses. And the flesh of the hide and the flesh on the hide he burnt with fire without the camp. And he slew the burnt offerings. And Aaron's sons presented unto him the blood which he sprinkled round about upon the altar. And they presented the burnt offering unto him with the pieces thereof and the head, and he burnt them upon the altar. And he did wash the inwards and the legs and burnt them upon the burnt offering on the altar. And he brought the people's offering and took the goat, which was the sin offering for the people, and slew it and offered it for sin uh, as the first. And he brought the burnt offering and offered it according to that manner. And he brought the meat offering and took a handful thereof and burnt it upon the altar beside the burnt sacrifice of the morning. He slew also the bullock and the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings, which was for the people. And Aaron's son presented unto him the blood, which he sprinkled upon the altar round about. And the fat of the bullock and the ram and the rump, and that which covered the inwards and the kidneys and the call above the liver. And they put the fat upon the breast and he burnt the fat upon the altar and the breast and the right shoulder Aaron waved for a wave offering before the Lord as Moses commanded. And Aaron lifted up his hand toward the people and blessed them and came down from offering for the sin offering and the burnt offering and peace offerings. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and blessed the people. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. And there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat, which when all the people saw, they shouted, and fell on their faces. Leviticus chapter number 10. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense 
thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. And before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. And Moses called Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. And Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which the Lord hath kindled. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die, for the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moses. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine, nor strong drink thou, nor thy sons with thee. When ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. And that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between clean and un between unclean and clean, and that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord hath spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. And Moses spake unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar, his sons that were left, Take the meat offering that remaineth of the offerings of the Lord made by fire, and eat it without leaven beside the altar, for it is most holy. And ye shall eat it in the holy place, because it is thy due and thy son's due of the sacrifices of the Lord made by fire, for so I am commanded. And the wave breast and the heap shoulders shall ye eat in a clean place, thou and thy sons and thy daughters with thee, and they be thy due. And thy sons do, which are given out of the sacrifices of peace offerings of the children of Israel. The heave shoulder and the wave breast shall they bring with the offering made by fire of the fat to wave it for a wave offering before the Lord. And it shall be thine and thy sons with thee by a statute forever, as the Lord hath commanded. And Moses diligently sought the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it was burnt. And he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, which were left alive, saying, Wherefore have ye not eaten the sin offering in the holy place, seeing it is most holy? And God hath given it you to bear the iniquity of the congregation, to make atonement for them before the Lord. Behold, the blood of it was not brought in within the holy place. Ye should indeed have eaten it in the holy place, as I commanded. And Aaron said to Moses, Behold, this day, have they offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord. And such things have befallen me. And if I had eaten the sin offering today, should it have been accepted in the sight of the Lord? And when Moses heard that, he was content. Leviticus chapter 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among the beasts that are on the Whatsoever parted the hoof, and is cloven-footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean unto you, as the convi, convi, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean to you, as the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean to you, as the swine. Though he divide the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Or their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas, and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. They shall be even an abomination unto you. You shall not eat of their flesh, but you shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. And these are they which ye shall have in abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the ossifrage, and the osprey, and the vulture, and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cuckoo, and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gyre eagle, and the stork, and the heron after her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat, 
All fowls that creep go in upon all fours shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may be, yet these may ye eat of every flying, creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet, to leap with all upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. And for these ye shall be unclean. Whosoever toucheth the carcass of them shall be unclean until the even. And whosoever beareth aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. The carcass of every beast which divided the hoof and is not cloven-footed, nor cheweth the cut, are unclean unto you. Every one that toucheth them shall be unclean. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws among all manner of beasts that go on all four, those are unclean unto you. Whoso toucheth their carcasses shall be unclean until the evening. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. They are unclean unto you. These also be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel and the mouse and the tortoise after his kind, and the ferret and the chameleon and the lizard and the snail and the mole. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Whosoever doth touch them when they be dead shall be unclean until the evening. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, doth fall, it shall be unclean, whether it be any vessel of wood, or raiment, or skin, or sack, whatsoever vessel it be, therein, wherein any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until the evening, so, until the even, so it, it shall be cleansed. And every earthen vessel wherein to any of them falleth whatsoever is in it shall be unclean and, it sh and ye shall break it of all the meat which may be eaten that on which such waters cometh shall be unclean and all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean and every thing whereupon any part of their carcass falleth shall be unclean whether it be oven or ranges of, for pots they shall be broken down, for they are unclean, and shall be unclean unto you. Nevertheless, a fountain or pit wherein there is plenty water shall be clean, but that which toucheth their carcass shall be unclean. And if any part of their carcass fall upon any sowing seed which is to be sown, it shall be clean. But if any water be put upon the seed, and any part of their carcass fall thereon, it shall be unclean to you. And if any beast of which ye may eat die, he that toucheth the carcass thereof shall be unclean until the even. And he that eateth of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. And he also that beareth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. And every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth shall be an abomination. Uh, it shall not be eaten. Whatsoever goeth upon the belly and whatsoever goeth upon all four or whatsoever hath more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth them ye shall not eat, for they are an abomination. Ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth, neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them, that ye should be defiled thereby. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. And neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl, and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten, and the beast that may not be eaten. Leviticus chapter 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed, and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation for her infirmity shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day, in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she rear a maid child, then she shall be unclean two weeks, as in her separation, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring 
a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priest, who shall offer it before the Lord and make an atonement for her, and she shall be the issue of her blood. This is the law for her that hath borne a male or a female. And if she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons, the one for the burnt offering and the other for a sin offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for her, and she shall be clean. Leviticus chapter 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or bright spot, and if and it be in the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons the priest. And the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh, and when the hair in the plague is turned white, and the plague inside be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy, and the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh, and in sight be not deeper than the skin, and the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut up him that hath the plague seven days. And the priest shall look on him the seventh day, and behold, if the plague in his sight be at a stay, and the plague spread not in the skin, then the priest shall shut him up seven days more. And the priest shall look on him again, the seventh day, and behold, if the plague be somewhat dark, and the plague spread not on, in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean, it is but a scab, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the scab spread much abroad in the skin, after that he hath seen of, uh, been seen of the priest for his cleansing, he shall be seen of the priest again. And if the priest see that, behold, the scab spreadeth in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean, it is a, lepros a leprosy. When the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought unto the priest. And the priest shall see him, and behold, if the rising be white in the skin, and it have turned the hair white, and there be quick raw flesh in the rising, it is an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh. And the priest shall pronounce him unclean, and shall not shut him up, for he is unclean. And if a leprosy break out abroad the skin, and the leprosy cover all the skin of him that hath the plague from his head even to his foot, wheresoever the priest looketh, then the priest shall consider, and behold, if the leprosy have covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean, that hath the plague, it is all turned white, he is clean. But when raw flesh appeareth in him, he shall be unclean. And the priest shall see the raw flesh and pronounce him to be unclean, for the raw flesh is unclean, it is a leprosy. Or if the raw flesh turn again and be changed unto white, he shall come unto the priest. And the priest shall see him, and behold, if the plague be turned into white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean, that, that hath the plague, he is clean. The flesh also, in which even in the skin thereof was a boil, as is healed, and the place of the boil there to be a white rising, or a bright spot, white and somewhat reddish, and it be showed to the priest, and if, when the priest seeth it, behold, it be in sight lower than the skin, and the hair thereof be turned white, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague of leprosy broken out of the boil. But if the priest look on it, and behold, there be no white hairs thereon, and if it be not lower than the skin, but be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. And if it spread much abroad the skin, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean, it is a plague. But if the bright spot stay in his place and spread not, it is a burning boil, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. Or if there be any flesh in the skin whereof there is a hot burning, and the quick flesh that burneth have a white bright spot, somewhat reddish or white, then the priest shall look upon it, and behold, if the hair in the bright spot be turned white, and it be in sight deeper than the skin, it is a leprosy broken out of the burning. Wherefore the priest shall pronounce him unclean, it is the plague of leprosy. But if the priest look on it, and behold, there be no white hair in the bright spot, and it be no new, and it be no lower than the other skin, but be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. And the priest shall look upon him the seventh day, and if he be and if it be spread much abroad the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean, it is the plague of leprosy. And if the bright spot stay in this place and spread not in the skin, but it be somewhat dark, it is a rising of the burning, and the priest shall pronounce him clean, for it is an inflammation of the burning. If a man or woman have a plague upon the head or the beard, then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it 
be in sight deeper than the skin and there be in it a yellow thin hair then the priest shall pronounce them unclean it is a dry skull even a leprosy upon the head or beard and if the priest look on the plague of the skull and behold it be not in the sight deeper than the skin and that there is no black hair in it then the priest shall shut him up shut up him that hath the plague of the skull seven days and in the seventh day the priest shall look on the plague and behold if the skull spread not and there be in it no yellow hair and the skull be not in sight deeper than the skin he shall be shaven but the skull shall he not shave and the priest shall shut up him that hath the skull seven days and in the seventh day the priest shall look on the skull and behold if the skull be not spread in the skin nor be in sight deeper than the skin then the priest shall pronounce him clean and he shall wash his clothes and be clean but if the skull is spread much in the skin after his cleansing then the priest shall look on him and behold if the skull be spread in the skin, the priest shall not seek for yellow hair. He is unclean. But if the skull be in his sight as, as stay, and that there is black hair grown up therein, the skull is healed, he is clean, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. If a man also or woman have in the skin of their flesh bright spots, even white bright spots, then the priest shall look and behold, if the bright spots in the skin of their flesh be darkish white, it is a freckled spot that groweth in the skin, he is clean. And the man whose hair is fallen off his head, he is bald, yet is he clean. And he that hath his hair fallen off from the part of his head toward his face, he, he is forehead bald, yet is he clean. And if there be in the bald head or a bald forehead a white reddish sore, it is a leprosy sprung up in his bald head or his bald forehead. Then the priest shall look upon it, and behold, if the rising of the sore be white and reddish in his bald head, or in his bald forehead, as the leprosy appeareth in the skin of his flesh, he is a leprous man, he is unclean, the priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean, and his plague, his plague is in his head. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, Unclean! Unclean! All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, shall be defiled. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone without the camp, shall his habitation be. The garment also that the plague of leprosy is in, whether it be a woolen garment or a linen garment, whether it be in the warp or wolf of linen or of woolen, whether it a skin or in anything made of skin, and if the plague be greenish or reddish in the garment or in the skin, either in the warp or in the wolf or in anything of the skin it is a plague of leprosy and it shall be showed unto the priest and the priest shall look upon the plague and shut up that hath plague seven days and he shall look on the plague on the seventh day if the plague be spread in the garment either in the warp or in the wolf or in a skin or in any work that is made of the skin the plague is a fretting leprosy it is unclean he shall therefore burn the garment burn that garment whether warp or wolf in woolen or in linen, or anything of skin, wherein the plague is, for it is a fretting leprosy, it shall be burnt in the fire. And if the priest shall look, and behold, the plague be not spread in the garment, either in the warp, or in the wolf, or in anything of skin, then the priest shall command that they wash the thing wherein the plague is, and he shall shut it up seven days more. And the priest shall look on the plague after that he, he, it is washed, and behold, if the plague have not changed his color, and the plague be not spread, it is unclean. Thou shalt burn it in the fire with, with his, uh, it is fret inward, whether it be bare within or without. And if the priest look, and behold, the plague be somewhat dark after the washing of it, and then he shall rend it out of the garment, or out of the skin, or out of the warp, or out of the wolf. And if it appear still in the garment, either in the warp, or in the wolf, or in anything of the skin, it is a spreading plague. Thou shalt burn that wherein the plague is with fire and the garment either warp or wolf or whatsoever thing of skin it be which thou shalt wash if the plague be departed from them then it shall be washed the second time and shall be clean this is the law of the plague of leprosy in the garment of woolen or linen either in the warp or wolf or any clean or anything of skins to pronounce it clean or to pronounce it unclean leviticus chapter number 14 and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest, and 
The priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look, and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, then shall the priest command to take for him, that is, to be cleansed, two birds alive and clean, and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop, and the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. As for the living bird, he shall take it, and the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop, and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times and shall pronounce him clean and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. And he that is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes and shave off all his hair and wash himself in water that he may be clean. And after that he shall come into the camp and shall tarry abroad out of his tent seven days. But it shall be on the seventh day that he shall leave all his hair off his head, and his beard, and his eyebrows, even all his hair he shall shave off, and he shall wash his clothes. Also he shall wash his flesh in water, and he shall be clean. And on the eighth day he shall take two he lambs without blemish, and one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish, and three tenths, three tenth deals of fine flour for a meat offering mingled with oil, and one of and one log of oil. And the priest that maketh him clean shall present the man that is to be made clean, and those things before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall take one he lamb, and offer him for a trespass offering, and the log of oil, and wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And he shall slay the lamb in the place where he shall kill the sin offering, and the burnt offering in the holy place. For as the sin offering is the priest, so is the trespass offering. It is most holy. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and the priest shall put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil, and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. And the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand, and shall sprinkle of the oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. And of the rest of the oil that is in the hand, in his hand shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot, upon the blood of the trespass offering. And the remnant of the oil that is in the priest's hand, he shall pour upon the head of him that is to be cleansed, and the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord. And the priest shall offer the sin offering, and make an atonement for him that, that is to be cleansed from his uncleanness, and afterward he shall kill the burnt offering. And the priest shall offer the burnt offering and the meat offering upon the altar, and the priest shall make an atonement for him and shall be clean. And if he be poor and cannot get so much, then he shall take one lamb for a trespass offering to be waived to make an atonement for him, and one-tenth deal of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, and a log of oil and two turtle doves or two young pigeons, such as he is able to get. And the one shall be a sin offering and the other a burnt offering, and he shall bring them on the eighth day for his cleansing unto the priest and to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. And the priest shall take the lamb of the trespass offering and the log of oil. And the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And he shall kill the lamb of the trespass offering. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering and put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed. And upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall pour of the oil into the palm of his own left hand, and the priest shall sprinkle uh, with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before the Lord. And the priest shall put of the oil that is in his hand upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot, upon the place of the blood of the trespass offering. And the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall put upon the head of him that is to be cleansed, to make an atonement for him before the Lord. And he shall offer the one of the turtle doves or of the young pigeons, such as he can get, even such as he is able to get, the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering, with the meat offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for him that is to be cleansed before the Lord. This is the law of him in whom is the plague of leprosy, whose hand is not able to get that which pertaineth to his cleansing. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, unto Aaron, saying, When ye come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you for a possession, and I put the plague of leprosy in a house of the land of your possession, and he that owneth the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, It seemeth to me there is as it were a plague in the house, 
Then the priest shall command that they empty the house before the priests go into it to see the plague, that all that is in the house be not made unclean, and afterward the priest shall go in to see the house. And he shall look on the plague, and behold, if the plague be in the walls of the house with hollow strakes, greenish or reddish, which in sight are lower than the wall, then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house and shut up the house seven days. And the priest shall come again the seventh day and shall look. And behold, if the plague be spread in the walls of the house, the priest shall command that they take away the stones in which the plague is, and they shall cast them into an unclean place without the city. And he shall cause the house to be scraped within, round about, and they shall pour out the dust that they scrape off without the city into an unclean place. And they shall take other stones and put them in the place of those stones. And he shall take other mortar and shall plaster the house. And if the plague come again and break into the house, after that he hath taken away the stones, and after he hath scraped the house, and after it is plastered, then the priest shall come and look. And behold, if the plague be spread into the house, it is a fretting leprosy in the house, it is unclean. And he shall break down the house, the stones of it, the timber thereof, and all the mortar of the house, and he shall carry them forth out of the city into an unclean place. Moreover, he that goeth into the house, all the while that it is shut up, shall be unclean until the even. And he that lieth in the house shall wash his clothes, and he that eateth in the house shall wash his clothes. And if the priest shall come in and look upon it, and behold, the plague hath not spread in the house after the house was plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean, because the plague is healed. And he shall take the cleanse, he shall take to cleanse the house two birds and two cedar woods and scarlet and hyssop, and he shall kill the one of the birds in the earthen vessel over running water, and he shall take the cedar wood and the hyssop and the scarlet and the living bird and dip them in the blood of the slain bird and in the running water and sprinkle the house seven times, and he shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird and with the running water and with the living bird and with the cedar wood and with the hyssop and with the scarlet. But he shall let go the living bird out of the city into the open field and make an atonement for the house, and it shall be clean. This is the law for all manner of plague of leprosy and skull and for the leprosy of garment and of a house and for the rising and for a rising for a scab and for a bright spot to teach when it is unclean and when it is clean. This is the law of leprosy. Chapter 15. We're almost there, folks. Great job, all of you. Chapter 15. Okay. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When any man hath a running issue out of his flesh because of his issue, he is unclean. And this shall be his uncleanness in his issue, whether his flesh run with his issue, or his flesh be stopped from his issue, it is his uncleanness. Every bed whereon he lieth, that hath the issue is unclean, and everything whereon he sitteth shall be unclean. And whosoever toucheth his bed shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the evening. And he that sitteth on anything wherein he sat, that hath the issue, shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, he, and he be unclean until the evening. And he that toucheth the flesh of him that hath the issue shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the evening. And if he that hath the issue spit upon him that is clean, then he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And what saddle soever he rideth upon that hath the issue shall be unclean. And whosoever toucheth anything that was under him shall be unclean until the evening. And he that beareth any of those things which shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until even. And whomsoever he toucheth that hath the issue and hath not rinsed his hands in water, he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until evening. And the vessel of earth that he toucheth with which hath the issue shall, shall be broken, and every vessel of wood shall be rinsed in water. And he that hath an issue is cleansed of his issue. And when he that hath an issue is cleansed of his issue, then he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing, and wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in running water, and shall be clean. And on the eighth day he shall take to him two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, and come before the Lord unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and give them unto the priest. And the priest shall offer them the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord. 
for his issue. And if a man, any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean unto the evening. And every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the evening. The woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the evening. And if a woman have an issue and her issue is in, in her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the evening. And everything that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean. And whosoever toucheth her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and, and be unclean until the evening. And whosoever touches anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening. And if it be on her bed or on anything wherein, whereon she sitteth, when he toucheth it, he, it, he shall be unclean until the evening. And if any man lie with her at all and her flowers be upon him, he shall be unclean seven days and all the bed whereon he lieth shall be unclean. And if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of time, out of the time of her separation, or if it run beyond the time of her separation, all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation, she shall be unclean. Every bed whereon she lieth, all the days of her issue shall be unto her as the bed of her separation, and whatsoever she sitteth upon shall be unclean as the uncleanness of her separation. And whosoever toucheth those things shall be unclean, and shall wash his clothes, and shall bathe himself in water, and, sh and be unclean until the evening. But if she be cleansed of her issue, then she shall number to herself seven days, and after that she shall be clean. And on the eighth day she shall take unto her two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, and bring them unto the priest to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for her before the Lord for the issue of her uncleanness. Thus shall ye separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness, that they die not in their uncleanness when they defile my tabernacle that is among them. This is the law of him that hath an issue, and of him whose seed goeth from him, and is defiled therewith, and of her that is sick of her flowers, and of him that hath an issue, of the man and of the woman, and of him that lieth with her that is unclean. Leviticus chapter 16. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times unto the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be girded with a linen girdle and with the linen mitre shall he be attired. These are holy garments thereof. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids and of the goats for a sin offering, and one ram for a burnt offering, and Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he that take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering which is for himself and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord and his hands full of sweet incense beaten small and bring it with all the veil, within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony, that he die not. And he shall take the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do that 
and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of uncleanness, the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation uh, when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it and shall take of the blood uh, and shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar round about him. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hollow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And when he hath made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring, uh, he shall bring the living goat. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and put their transgress all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities into a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat into the wilderness. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall put off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the holy place, and shall leave them there. <clears throat> and he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place, and put on his garments, and come forth and offer his burnt offering, and the burnt offering of his people, and make an atonement for himself and for the people. And the fat of the sin offering shall he burn upon the altar. And he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp. And the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering whose blood was brought in to make atonement for the, in the holy place shall one carry forth without the camp. And they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their dung. And he that burneth them uh, shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp. And this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls, and do no work at all, whether it be one for your own country, or a stranger that sojourneth among you. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you, to cleanse you, that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and you shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. And the priests whom he shall anoint, and whom he shall consecrate to his minister in the priest's office in his father's stead, shall make the atonement, and shall put on their linen clothes, even thy holy garments. And he shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary, and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation, and for the altar. And he shall make an atonement for the priests, and for all the people of the congregation, and this shall be an everlasting statute unto you, to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. Leviticus 17, We're getting closer. All right. <clears throat> and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons and unto all the children of Israel and say unto them, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded, saying, What's, What man soever there be of the house of Israel that killeth an ox or a lamb or a goat in the camp or that killeth it out of the camp and bringeth it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation to offer an offering unto the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord, blood shall be imputed unto that man. He has shed blood and that man shall be cut off from among his people. To the end that the children of Israel may bring their sacrifices which they offer in the open field, even that they may bring them unto the Lord, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priests, and offer them for a peace offering unto the Lord. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and burn the fat for a sweet savor unto the Lord. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils after whom they have gone a-whoring. This shall be a statute forever unto them throughout their generations. And thou shalt say unto them, Whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers which sojourn among you that offer the burnt offering or sacrifice and bringeth 
it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation to offer it unto the Lord, even that man shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon your altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel, of the strangers that sojourn among you, which hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. For it is the life of all flesh, the blood of it, the blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, You shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of the flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. And every soul that eateth that which dieth of itself, or that which was torn with beasts, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening that then shall he be clean. But if he wash them not, nor bathe his flesh, then he shall bear his iniquity. Leviticus 18. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments, and keep mine ordinances, to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. The nakedness of thy sister, thy daughter of thy father or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. The nakedness of thy son's daughter, or the nakedness, thy nakedness, or thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister, she is thy father's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sisters, for she is thy mother's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thine aunt. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law. She is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are her near kinswoman. It is wickedness. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her to uncover her nakedness besides the other in her lifetime. Uh, also, thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie there, down there too. It is confusion. Defile not yourselves with any of these things. For in all these the nations that uh, are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity there, thereof upon it. And the land itself vomiteth out uh, her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled, that the land spew not you out also when you defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall you keep mine ordinance, 
that you commit not any of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus chapter 19, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I the Lord your God am holy. Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Turn ye not unto idols, nor make, your, nor make to yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. And if ye offer a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord, ye shall offer it at your own will. If it be eaten the same day ye offer it, and on the morrow, if it uh, if aught remain unto the third day, it shall be burnt with fire. And if it be eaten at all on the third day, it is abominable, it shall not be accepted. Therefore, every one that eateth it shall bear his iniquity, because he hath profaned and hallowed the hallowed thing of the Lord, uh, and that soul shall be cut off from his people. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of the field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of the harvest, and thou shalt not glean the vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of the vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. For I am the Lord. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. Uh, the wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, uh, but shalt fear thy God. I am the Lord. Thou, uh, ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among the people, thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt uh, thou shalt in any wise in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Uh, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. And whosoever lieth carnally with a woman that is a bondmaid betrothed to an husband, and not at all redeemed nor freedom given her, she shall be scourged, they shall not be put to death, because she was not free. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, even a ram for a trespass offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him uh, with the ram of the trespass offering, and before the Lord for his sin, his sin which he hath done, and the sin which he had done shall be forgiven him. And when he, and when ye shall come into the land, and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, then ye shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. Three years shall it be uncircumcised unto you; it shall not be eaten thereof. But in the fourth year all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise the Lord withal. And in the fifth year shall ye eat the fruit thereof, that it may yield unto the increase thereof. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantments, nor observe times. Uh, ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be uh, a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom, and the land become full of wickedness. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths, and the reverence and reverence my sanctuary, I am the Lord. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head, and honor thy face of the old man, and fear thy God. I am the Lord. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him. But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you. And thou shalt love him as thyself, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment, or in meat yard, in weight, or in measure. Just balances, just weights, a just ephah, and a just end shall ye have. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe all my statutes and all my judgments, and do them. I am the Lord. Genesis, uh, Leviticus 20. We're almost there. Seven more chapters. Okay. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again, 
Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Whosoever be of the children of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. And I will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from among his people, because he hath given of his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. And if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the man when he giveth of his seed unto Molech, and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off and all that go whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. For every one that curseth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. He that he hath cursed his father or his mother, his blood shall be upon him. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. And the man that lieth with his father's wife hath uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And if a man lie with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be put to death. They have wrought confusion. Their blood shall be upon them. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And if a man take a wife and her mother, it is wickedness. They shall be burnt with fire, both he and they, that there be no wickedness among you. And if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and you shall slay the beast. And if a woman approach unto any beast and lie down there too, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And if a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter or his mother's daughter and see her nakedness and, and she see his nakedness, it is a wicked thing and they shall be cut off in the sight of their people. He hath uncovered his sister's nakedness. He shall bear his iniquity. And if a man shall lie with a woman having her sickness and shall uncover her nakedness, he hath discovered her fountain and she hath uncovered the fountain of her blood and both of them shall be cut off from among their people. And thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, nor of thy father's sister, for he uncovereth his near kin. They shall bear their iniquity. And if a man shall lie with his uncle's wife, he hath uncovered his uncle's nakedness. They shall bear their sin. They shall die childless. And if a man shall take his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing. He hath uncovered his brother's nakedness. They shall be childless. Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them that the land whither I bring you to dwell therein, spew you not out. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit the land, their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. Ye shall therefore put difference between clean beasts and unclean, and between unclean fowls and clean and ye shall not make your souls abominable by beast or by fowl or by any manner of living thing that creepeth upon the ground creepeth on the ground which i have separated from you as clean and ye shall be holy unto me for i the lord for i the lord am holy and have se severed you from other people that ye should be mine a man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death they shall stone them with stones their blood shall be upon them All right, we're almost there. Leviticus 21. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say unto them, There shall none be defiled for the dead among his people, but for his kin that is near unto him, that is, for his mother and for his father and for his son and for his daughter and for his brother and for uh, his sister, a virgin that is nigh unto him, which he hath no, which hath no, had no husband, for her may he be defiled, but he shall not defile himself, being a chief man among the people, to profane himself. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard, nor make any cuttings in the flesh. They shall be holy unto their God, and not profane the name of their God. For the offerings of the Lord made by fire, and the bread of their God they do offer, therefore shall they, they shall be holy. 
They shall not take a wife that is a whore or profane, neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband, for he is holy unto, unto his God. Thou shalt sanctify him therefore, for he offereth the bread of thy God. He shall be holy unto thee, for I the Lord which sanctify you am holy. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaneth her father, she shall be burnt with fire. And he that is the high priest among his brethren, upon whose head the anointing oil was poured, and that is consecrated to put out his garments, shall not uncover his head, nor rend his clothes, neither shall he go in to any dead body, nor defile himself for his father or for his mother, neither shall he go out of the sanctuary, nor profane the sanctuary of his God, for the crown of the anointing oil of his God is upon him. I am the Lord. And he shall take a wife and her virginity, a widow or a divorced woman, or profane, or an harlot, these shall he not take, uh, but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife. Neither shall he profane his seed among his people, for I, the Lord, do sanctify him. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever uh, he be of thy seed in their generations that hath any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. For whatsoever a man he be that hath a not approach a blind man or a lame or he that hath a uh, a flat nose or anything superfluous or a man that is broken footed or broken handed or crook backed or dwarf or that hath a blemish in his eye or hath scurvy or scabbed or scabbed or hath his stones broken no man that hath a blemish of the seed of Aaron the priest shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire he hath a blemish he hath not come nigh to offer he shall not come nigh to offer uh, the bread of his God. He shall eat the bread of his God, both of the most holy and of the holy. Only he shall not go in unto the veil, nor come nigh unto the altar, because he hath a blemish, that he profane not my sanctuaries, for I, the Lord, do sanctify them. And Moses told it unto Aaron and to his sons and to all the children of Israel. Leviticus 22. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, that they separate themselves from the holy things that, of the children of Israel, and that they profane not my holy name in those things which they hallow unto me. I am the Lord. Uh, say unto them, Whosoever he be of your seed among your generations that goeth unto the holy things which the children of Israel hallow unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, that soul shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. What man soever of the seed of Aaron is a leper, hath a running issue, he shall not eat of the holy things until he be clean. And whoso toucheth anything that is unclean by the dead, or a man uh, whose seed goeth from him, or whosoever toucheth any creeping thing whereby he may be made unclean, or a man of whom he may take uncleanness whatsoever uncleanness he hath, that soul which hath touched any such shall be unclean until even, and shall not eat of the holy things unless he wash his flesh with water, and when the sun is down, he shall be clean, and shall afterward eat of the holy things, because it is his food. That which dieth of itself, or is torn with beasts, he shall not eat to defile himself. Therewith I am the Lord. They shall therefore uh, keep mine ordinance, lest they bear sin for it, and die there, therefore if they profane it. I, the Lord, do sanctify them. There shall no stranger eat of the holy thing. A sojourner or, or the priest or a hired servant shall not eat of the holy thing. But if the priest by any soul with his money, he shall eat of it. And he that is born in his house, they shall eat of his meat. And if the priest's daughter also be married unto a stranger, she may not eat of an offering of the holy things. But if the priest daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child and is returned unto her father's house as in her youth she shall eat of her father's meat but there shall no stranger eat thereof and if a man eat of the holy thing unwittingly then he he shall put the fifth part there, thereof unto it and shall give it unto the priest with the holy thing and they shall not profane the holy things of the children of Israel which they offered unto the Lord or suffer them to bear iniquity of trespass when they eat their holy things. For I, the Lord, do sanctify them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons and to all the children of Israel, and say unto them, Whatsoever he be of the house of Israel or of the strangers in Israel, that will offer his oblation for all his vows and for all his free will offerings, uh, which they will offer unto the Lord for a burnt offering, ye shall offer at your own will a male without blemish of the beeves, of the sheep or of the goats, but whatsoever hath a blemish that uh, shall that shall ye not offer, for it shall not be acceptable to 
for you. And what's and whosoever offereth the sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord to accomplish his vow or a free will offering in beeves or sheep, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein, blind or broken or maimed or having a wen or scurvy or scab. Ye shall not offer these unto the Lord, nor make an offering by fire of them uh, upon the altar of the Lord, either a bullock or a lamb that they uh, that hath any things superfluous or lacking in his parts thou mayest offer for a freewill offering but a vow but for a vow it shall not be accepted ye shall not offer unto the lord that which is bruised or crushed or broken or cut neither shall ye make any offering thereof in your land neither from a stranger's hand shall ye offer the bread of your god of any of these because their their corruption is in them and blemishes be in them they shall not be accepted for you and the lord spake unto moses saying when a bullock or a sheep or a goat is brought forth then it shall be seven days under the dam, and from the eighth day and thenceforth it shall be acceptable for an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And whether it be a cow or you, um, ye shall not kill it and her young both in one day. And when ye will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. On the same day it shall be eaten up. You shall leave none of it until the morrow. I am the Lord. Therefore shall ye keep my commandments and do them i am the lord neither shall you profane my holy name but i will be hallowed among the children of israel i am the lord which hallow you that brought you out of the land of egypt to be your god i am the lord we are almost there folks just a couple more chapters here one second <clears throat> good job everyone all right Le Leviticus chapter number 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feast. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein, it is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the fourteenth day of the first month, at even, is the Lord's Passover. On the fifteenth day, and on the fifteenth day of the same month, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work therein. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall weigh the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath the priest shall wave it. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf on he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenths deals of fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor, and the drink offering thereof shall be of wine the fourth part of an hen. And ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto the Lord. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. And ye shall count unto them, unto you, for the morrow after the Sabbath, for the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seventh, seventh Sabbath shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the Sabbath, seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. And ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave, two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be a fine flour, they shall be bacon with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord, and ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish for the first year, and one young bullock and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord, with their meat offering and their drink offering, even an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto the Lord. They shall sacrifice one kid of the goats of a sin offering, and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priests shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering, before the Lord with the two lambs, they shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. And ye shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be a holy convocation unto you. You shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. And when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of the field. When thou reapest, neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. 
Thou shalt lead them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, On the Sabbath, on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. And ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall do no work in that same day. For it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For, whosoever, for whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Ye shall do no manner of work, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Uh, it shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even unto even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days, uh, for seven days unto the Lord. Uh, on, the seven, on the first day shall be an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. These are the feasts of the Lord which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything upon upon his day and the sabbaths of the lord and beside your gifts and beside all your vows and beside your free will offerings which ye give unto the lord also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month when you have gathered in the fruit of the land you shall keep a feast unto the lord seven days on the first day shall be a sabbath and on the eighth day shall be a sabbath and ye shall uh, and ye shall take you on the first day the bows of the goodly trees branches of the palm trees and the boughs of the thick trees and willows of the brook and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days and ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year it shall be a statute forever in your generations ye shall celebrate it this, uh, in the seventh month ye shall dwell in booths seven days all that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt I am the Lord your God and Moses declared unto the children of Israel, the feasts of the Lord. How are we doing on time? Okay, we're almost done. All right, Leviticus 24, chapter 24. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil olive, beaten for the light, to cause the lamps to burn continually without the veil of the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation shall Aaron order it from the evening unto the morning before the Lord continually it shall be a statute forever in your generations he shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Lord continually and thou shalt take fine flour and bake twelve cakes thereof two tenths deals shall be in one cake and thou shalt set them in two rows six on a row upon the pure table before the Lord and thou shalt put pure frankincense upon each row, that it may be on the bread for a memorial, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Every Sabbath he shall set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. And it shall be Aaron, Aaron's and his sons, and they shall eat it in the holy place, for it is most holy unto him by the offerings of the Lord made by fire, by a perpetual statute. And the son of an Israelite, Israelitish woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the children of Israel, and the son of the Israelitish woman uh, and a man of Israel strove together in the camp, and the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed, and they brought him into Moses, unto Moses, and his mother's name was Shelomith, the daughter of Dibri and of the tribe of Dan, and they put him inward that the mind of the Lord might be showed them, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring forth him that hath cursed without the camp, and let all that heard him lay hands upon his head, and let all the congregation stone him. And they, they and thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin. 
And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death, and all the congregation shall certainly stone him as well as the as well the stranger as he that is born in the land when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord shall be put to death and he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death and he that killeth a beast shall make it good beast for beast and if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor as he hath done so shall it be done to him breach for breach eye for eye tooth for tooth as he hath caused a blemish in a man so shall it be done to him again and he that killeth a beast he shall restore it and he that killeth a man he shall be put to death Ye shall have, uh, ye shall have one manner of law as well for the stranger as for one of your own country, for I am the Lord your God. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel that they should bring forth him that had cursed uh, out of the camp and stone him with stones. And the children of Israel did as the Lord commanded. Leviticus 25, And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest Thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of thy vine and dress, for it is a year of rest unto the land. And the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, for thee and for thy servant and for thy maid and for thy hired servant and for thy stranger and that's, that sojourneth with thee and for thy cattle and for the beasts that are in the land shall all the increase thereof be meat. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, the day of the atonement, shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee, a jubil unto you. And ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. A jubil shall that fiftieth year be unto you. Uh, ye shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine undressed, for it is a jubil. Uh, it shall be holy unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. Uh, in the year of this ju jubil, ye shall return uh, every man unto his possession. If thou sell aught unto the neighbor or buy us aught of thy neighbor's hand, ye shall not oppress one, one another. According to the number of years after the jubil, uh, thou shalt buy of thy hand of thy neighbor, and according to the number of years of the fruits, he shall sell unto thee. According to the multitude of years, thou shalt increase the price thereof, and according to the fewness of years, uh, thou shalt diminish the price of it, for according to the number of the years of the fruits doth he sell unto thee. Ye shall not therefore oppress one another, but thou shalt fear thy God, for I am the Lord your God. Wherefore ye shall do my statutes, and keep my judgments, and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land in safety. And the land shall yield her fruit, and ye shall eat your fill, and dwell therein in safety. And if ye shall say, What shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow nor gather in our increase. Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. And ye shall sow the eighth year, and eat yet of old fruit until the ninth year, until her fruits come in, ye shall eat of the old store. The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine, for ye are strangers and sojourners with me. And in all the land of your possession ye shall grant a redemption for the land. If thy brother be waxen poor, he has sold away, and, ha and hath sold away some of his possessions. And if any of his kin come to redeem him, then shall ye, then shall he, re redeem that which his brother sold. And if the man hath none to redeem it, and he himself be able to redeem it, then let him count the years of the sale thereof and restore the overplus unto the man to whom he sold it, and he may return unto his possession. But if he be not able to restore it unto him, then that which is sold shall remain in the hand of him that hath brought it unto the year of the jub jubil jubilee. In the jubilee it shall go out, and he shall return unto his possession. And if the man selling a dwelling house 
in a walled city that he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold within a full year may he redeem it and if it be not redeemed within the space of a full year then the house that is in the walled city shall be established forever to him that brought it throughout his generations it shall not go out uh, in the jubilee but the houses of the villages which have no wall round about them shall be counted as the fields of the count of the country uh, the, they may be redeemed and they shall go out in the jubilee now, notwithstanding the cities of the levites and the houses of the cities of their possessions may the levites redeem at any time and if a man purchase of the levites then and if a man purchase of the Levites, then the house that was sold and the city of his possession shall go out in the year of Jubilee. For the houses of the possession of the cities of the Levites are their possession among the children of Israel. But the fields of her of the suburbs of their cities may not be sold, for it is their perpetual possession. And if thy brother be waxen poor and fallen and decay with thee, then thou shalt rel relieve him, yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with thee. Take thou no usury of him or increase, but fear the Lord, for fear thy God, that thy brother might live with thee. Thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury, nor lend him victuals for increase. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. If thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bondservant. But as an hired servant and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto a year, unto the year of Jubilee. And then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family and unto the possession of his father shall he return. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, but shalt fear thy God, both thy bondmen and thy bondsmaids, bondmaids which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen uh, that are round about you, of them that shall, that ye buy bondmen and bondsmaid, and bondmaids. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begat your land, in your land, and they shall be in your, they shall be your possession. And you shall take them, as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever, but over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. And if a sojourner or stranger wax rich by thee, and thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor, and sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee, or to the stock of the stranger's family, after that he is sold, he may be redeemed again, one of his brethren may redeem him. Either his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him, or any that is nigh of kin unto him of his family may redeem him, or if he is able, uh, he may redeem himself. And he shall reckon with him that bought him from the year that he was sold to, to him unto the year of the Jubilee. And the price of his sale shall be according unto the number of years, according to the time of an hired servant shall it be with him. If there be yet many years behind according unto them, he shall give again the price of his redemption out of the money that he was bought for. And if there remain but few years unto the year of Jubilee, then shall count with him, and according unto his years shall he give him again the price of his redemption. Uh, as a yearly hired servant shall he be with him, and the other shall not rule with rigor over him in thy sight. And if he be not redeemed in these years, then he shall go out in the year of Jubilee, both he and his children with him. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. All right, we have two more chapters and we're done. Uh, Leviticus 26. Ye shall make no idols nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield her fruit, and, their, and your threshing uh, shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely, and I will give you peace 
in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid, and I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your hand, and ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword, and five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to fight to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. And ye shall eat old store, and bring forth the old, because of the new. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you, and be your God, and ye shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be uh, their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke, and made you to go upright. Sorry about that. Made you to go upright. Oh, sorry. There you go. Where? Uh, uh, Leviticus 26. Yes. Shall I not make you be afraid, evil beast? Okay, here we go. And five of you shall chase a hundred, a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword, for I will have respect for you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant in you, and you shall eat old store, and bring forth old because of the new, and I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not, uh, shall not abhor you, and I will walk among you, and will be your God, and you shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their bondmen, and I have broken the bands of your yoke. And I made you go upright, but if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, uh, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that you will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I will also do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning egg that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of the heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies, and they that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth. And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins, and I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven, uh, your heaven as your heaven as iron, and your earth as brass. And your strength shall be spent in vain, and your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield her fruits. And if you are contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in numbers and your highways shall be desolate. And if you will not be reformed by me, uh, by these things, will I walk contrary unto, uh, and, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times for your sin. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and shall not be satisfied. And if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury, and I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins, and you shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat, and I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast down and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you, and I will make your cities waste, and bring your sanctuaries into desolation, and I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors, odors, and I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbath, as long as it lieth desolate, and ye be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest, and enjoy her Sabbath. As long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest in your Sabbath when ye dwelt upon it. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts and in the lands of their enemies. And the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursueth. And they shall fall one upon another, as, as it were before a sword, when none pursueth. And, it shall, and, and ye shall have no power, nor stand before your enemies. And ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' land, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. 
If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me, and that also they have walked contrary to me, and that I have also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham, will I remember and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbaths while she lieth desolate with them, without them, and they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity because even because they despise my judgments and because their soul abhorred my statutes and yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt and the sight of the heathen that I might be their God that I might be their God, I am the Lord. These are the statutes and the judgments and the laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. All right, Leviticus 27, it's our last chapter. Wow, amen. All right, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When a man shall make a singular vow, the person shall be for the Lord by thy estimation, and the estimation shall be of the male from twenty years old even unto sixty years old even thy estimation shall be fifty shekels of silver after the shekel of the sanctuary and if it be a female then thy estimation shall be thirty shekels and if it be from five years old even unto twenty years old then thy estimation shall be of thy male twenty shekels and for the female for the female ten shekels and if it be from a month old even unto five years old then the estimation shall be of the male five shekels of silver and for the female thy estimation shall be three shekels of silver and if it be from 60 years old and above, if it be a male, then thy estimation shall be 15 shekels and for the female 10 shekels. But if the poor, then the est thy estimation, but if he be poor, then thy estimation, then he shall present himself before the priest and the priest shall value him according to his ability that vowed the priest be value him. And if the beast whereof men shall bring an offering unto the Lord, uh, all that any man giveth of such unto the Lord shall be holy. He shall not alter it, nor change it, a good for a bad, or a bad for a good. And if he shall at all change beast for beast, then it shall, then it and the exchange thereof shall be holy. And if it be any unclean beast of which they do not offer sacrifice unto the Lord, then he shall present the beast before the priest. And the priest shall value it, whether it be good or bad, as thou valuest it, who art the priest, shall it be. But if he will at all redeem it, then he shall add a fifth part thereof unto thy estimation. And when a man shall sanctify his house to be holy unto the Lord, then the priest shall estimate it, whether it be good or bad. As the priest shall estimate it, so shall it stand. And if he that sanctified it will redeem his house, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of his estimation unto it, and it shall be his. And if a man shall sanctify unto the Lord some part of the field of his possession, then thy estimation shall be according to the seed thereof. An homer of barley uh, seed shall be valued at fifty shekels of silver. If he sanctify his field from the year of jubilee according to thy estimation, it shall stand. But if he sanctify his field after the jubilee, then the priest shall reckon unto him that money according to the years that remain, even unto the year of the jubilee, and it shall be abated from thy estimation. And if he that sanctifieth the field will in any wise redeem it, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of thy estimation unto it, and it shall be assured. And if he will not redeem the field, or if he have sold the field to another man, it shall not be redeemed any more. But the field, when it goeth out in the jubilee, shall be the holy unto the Lord, as a field devoted, the possession thereof shall be the priest. And if a man sanctify unto the Lord a field which he had bought, which is not of the fields of a possession, then the priest shall reckon... Uh, unto him the worth of thy estimation, even unto the year of the jubilee, and he shall give thine estimation in that day as a holy come as a holy thing unto the Lord. In the year of the jubilee, the field shall return unto him of whom it was bought, even to him to whom the possession of the land did belong. Uh, and all thy estimation shall be according to the shekel of the sanctuary. Twenty geras shall be the shekel. Only the firstling of the beasts, which should be the Lord's firstling, no man shall sanctify. It, whether it be ox or sheep, it is the Lord's. And if it be of an unclean beast, then he shall redeem it according to thine estimation, and shall add a fifth part of it thereto, 
uh, or if it be not redeemed, then it shall be sold according to thy estimation. Notwithstanding, no devoted thing that a man shall devote unto the Lord of all that he hath, both of man and beast, and of the field of his possession, shall be sold or redeemed. Every devoted thing is most holy unto the Lord. None devoted shall be devoted of men. Shall, none devoted which shall be devoted of men shall be redeemed, but shall be surely, but shall surely be put to death. And uh, all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. If a man, and if a man will at all redeem out of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. And concerning the tithe of the herd, of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. Uh, he shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he change it. And if he change it at all, then both it and the change thereof shall be holy it shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. Alrighty. Wow, folks, that was quite a reading today. Thank you again. God bless you. And uh, we went uh, a little over, what was it? Uh, about two and a half hours, it looks like here. Uh, but we're, we're right on track. This is day three we finished. Congratulations. Uh, let's pray. And uh, you know what? We, we've we come too far to turn back, I think, right? I was like, this this is crazy, right? Three hours reading the Bible. Well, yesterday was two, two and a half hours. But I got to tell you, I, I, as soon as I end this transmission, uh, I say to my wife, I say, honey, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad, you know? I mean, I've never done this before. And uh, it's just amazing how God's Word is, is just incredible. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for every person who's watching, either live or on the recording. Lord, uh, I know the, the Bible is, is your word, God. It's inspired. You've given it to us. And all, all scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable, God. And sometimes we read and we're, we're not sure exactly why you put certain things in there, God, but we know it's, it's there for, for us. And uh, Lord, thank you for giving us your word. Uh, I pray, God, you bless uh, everyone who was watching or reading or listening. And I thank you again, Lord. Please protect us, watch over us, bring us back tomorrow. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, everybody. See you tomorrow. Take care.